Hello Christchurch. What a glorious Monday it is. The sun is shining here in sunny Southport. I do hope that at some point today you can just get out and enjoy the sunshine. I'm so excited to be able to share with you today James 4, 1 through to 12 and just some thoughts I've had around the passage. But before you read the passage, let me just pray for you. Lord, would you speak so clearly to my friends, my brothers and sisters here, as they read your words? Would you challenge them? Would you transform them more into the likeness of your son? Lord, as I speak some things that I've been thinking about, Lord, may they be from you. May your words stick. Amen. So please do pause now and read James 4, 1 through to 12. James is speaking into a heart issue for an apprentice of Jesus. A very clear and distinct choice that we have to make both when we start on our apprenticeship to Jesus, but also a daily choice of whether we are friends with the world, as James puts it, or friends with God. Do we live in the world by the world's standards, by the world's morals, values and expectations? Or do we as those who are seeking to apprenticeship to Jesus, becoming more and more like him, do we live differently? Do we in fact live in contrast to the world, set apart, so that people notice that there is something different about us? And that difference is the love of Jesus, exuberating from us. And James, I think, gives three clear sections to this passage, three clear ways and decisions that we have to make about whether we live in the world and of the world's standards or in God's and of his. The first part of this scripture talks about our desires. The middle bit talks about who we submit to. And the final bit talks about our relationship to others. As we make this choice, how do we relate to other people, therefore, as a result, if we make the choice, very active choice, to live as Jesus's apprentice. So this first one, our desires. James is very clearly speaking about the desires of this world overtaking our hearts. And these desires that we so often have, these unfulfilled desires that come up in our lives that are of the world's standards, cause us not to live, live, in the presence of Jesus, but draws us out of that, overtakes us. And as James puts it in verse two, so you kill. Now, James isn't literally speaking of murder here. He's not speaking of the act of killing somebody. What he is saying is you desire, but you do not have, so you kill. In essence, the desires, these unfulfilled worldly desires that we have lead us to death. Death of ourselves, death of our hearts, death of our relationship to Jesus. Whereas on the flip side, if our desires are of God's, our desires are set on him, that leads to life and life in all its fullness. And when these unfulfilled worldly desires happen. The worldly desires lead us to evil, talks about fighting, quarrelling, 
stuff that we know is not of God. And then these desires, James links clearly to prayer. Praying for something that is not of God, that is not of his motives, that is not pure. Well, James very clearly says here that God does not give us that. He doesn't grant us the worldly desires of our hearts. He does, on the contrast, however, listen and respond to those prayers that we give to him, those desires that we give to him who are of God. Lord, may I become more like you. God's going to hear that and I pray answer that as I am more transformed into his likeness. Lord, can I win the lottery? As a slightly silly example. God's not going to answer that desire. He's not going to grant us that wish because our motives are of the world, of materialism, of getting a big house, fancy holidays, etc. in that example. James is saying, what are our desires? What are our motives? Do they lead us to life or do they lead us to death? And then we get to verse four. You adulterous people. That is strong language. uh, James is saying here, are you having an affair? With this world. Because actually, if we are an apprentice of Jesus, our whole lives should be encompassed by this next thing that we're going to talk about, verse 7 our submission to God. But how often, me included, do we submit to God? Do we endeavour on our apprenticeship to Jesus? But then we have an affair with this world. We do something that follows these desires that are in our heart that are not of God. We do something, we say something, we act upon something or we don't act upon something. James is saying at that point we are having an affair with the world. Because we are trying to portray this life that we are apprentices of Jesus, that we are submitting to God, this choice that we are making. But then we go off and do something that is not of God, not living of God, but of this world. So you adulterous people, that you know that friendship with the world means enmity to war against God. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Stark words. But words that we daily, I think, should come back to. Every morning as we get out of bed, kneeling down saying, Today, Lord, as an apprentice of Jesus, I want to live in you, in submission to you, the one who gives life and not of the world that leads us to death. And how do we do that? How do we live in that way? How do we submit ourselves to God? Verse eight, come near to God and he will come near to you. Bask in his glory. I spoke yesterday at home church about this, about Mary and Martha and Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. That is how we submit to him. That is how we know how he wants us to live our lives, by coming near to him and then God coming near to us. So what do we need to do today? We need to, as it says there, wash your hands you sinners, and purify your hearts. We need to come 
as an act of repentance to God and say, Lord, when I have these affairs with the world, when I have these desires that are not of you, Lord, I repent of them. Because I want my desires to lead to life. And I want my whole life to lead to you in submission to you. Not being, as it says there at the end of verse eight, double minded of the world and of God. And then James speaks very practically about two things that if we make this choice, this daily choice to live for Jesus and not of the world, we should do. One, do not slander one another. And then lastly, do not judge, as it says in verse 12. Who are you to judge your neighbour? I don't have time to read it all, but go now and read Matthew 7, 1 through to 6. A passage where Jesus talks about not judging others, taking the speck out of your own eye. Read that, focus on that, pray through that as you go through this verses 11 and 12. So today, a few questions for you to ponder in prayer now. What are your desires of your heart? What are your motives? Are they of God or are they of this world? Do you need to wash your hands, to purify yourself in front of God and come near to him and submit to him? Maybe for the first time or maybe for the a thousandth time. Just sitting on your knees and saying, Lord, no, today I want to be transformed more into your likeness. I no longer want to have an affair with the world. I want to be so committed to you. Or do you need to think about this essence of slander and judgment on others? And whether that is leading you to life or whether that is leading you to death. Lord, as my brothers and sisters now pray reflect. Lord, would you continue to challenge them? But knowing, Lord, that you are a God of love and forgiveness, knowing, Lord, that we do mess up, but Lord, when we do, you welcome us home with open arms. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. And Lord, thank you that we can be obedient to you and have life and life to the full. Amen.